السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Hello everyone uh, New session from uh, Radiology Spotter Cases This is uh, the uh, session number 7 And as usual We will start now
Okay. Let's discuss the cases. Here, this is the first case. This is an MRI triphasic. We can see there is a well-defined, rather well-defined hepatic focal lesion seen at segment uh, seven. This well-defined focal lesion, so uh, a high central, high T2 central scar. In the arterial phase, the lesion take a rather homogeneous enhancement with no enhancement in the central scar. In the delayed image, the lesion is become uh, more or less uh, similar to the parenchyma of the liver with uh, enhancement of the central scar. These features are keeping with focal nodular hyperplasia. So this is uh, a segment seven focal hepatic uh, focal lesion, likely uh, focal nodular hyperplasia with characteristic high T2 central scar with characteristic delayed enhancement of the central scar with characteristic homogeneous enhancement in the arterial phase with no definite out, out with no definite wash out at delayed images. Okay. Case number two here, it is a, a long segment of distal ileal bowel loops uh, mural thickening. This mural thickening taking a long segment as we see here. This is goes with an inflammatory changes and we can see that uh, the mucosal pattern of, uh, of uh, uh, mucosal pattern here of thickening is a uh, uh, mural pattern of thickening is uh, called uh, submucosal halo or uh, uh, water uh, halo sign the mucosa here is take hyper enhancement and there is a submucosal edema and this also one of the characteristic of inflammatory changes in the bowel and we can see here a characteristic uh, 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 engorgement or prominence of uh, the mesenteric vessels uh, as we see here in the this is the thickened bowel loop long segment of the thickened bowel loop and this is uh, the engorged or prominent mesenteric uh, uh, vessels this is uh, which is called comb sign all these features are keeping with Crohn's disease. So this is a long segment of bowel affection with characteristic features of Crohn's disease. Next case here we can see that there is a multiple bilateral rather symmetrical hilar lymphadenopathy and subcranial lymphadenopathy. Bilateral hilar rather symmetrical hilar lymphadenopathy we should consider a sarcoidosis. We can also depict that there is uh, some nodules along the fissure with perilymphatic nodules. These all features are characteristic of uh, lung sarcoidosis. Lung sarcoidosis, we should consider lung sarcoidosis if there is a bilateral rather symmetrical high lymphadenopathy and especially in the presence of a perilymphatic nodule, we should consider uh, uh, lung sarcoidosis. Case number four here, we can see that there is a, a secular aneurysm seen arising from uh, the common left common femoral artery. We can see that this uh, aneurysm is irregular and surrounded by uh, 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 isodense or hyperdense uh, 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 lesions. This hyperdense or uh, uh, isodense mixed hyper and hyper and isodensity lesions is likely representing a hematoma, and this is a characteristic of a uh, 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 pseudo aneurysm. So, so this is a left common femoral artery pseudo aneurysm. In the pseudo aneurysm, usually the wall of the aneurysm is formed by a hematoma and it is usually irregular like this and this is uh, one of the characteristic uh, one of the common side of uh, the pseudo aneurysm is uh, the left common femoral artery and this in this case it was usually it was a uh, se uh, sequel of uh, uh, femoral catheterization so the characteristic feature of the pseudo aneurysm is uh, the presence of surrounding hematoma is with one of the characteristic features of uh, the pseudo aneurysm so in this case we can see in this 3D reconstructed images we can see clearly see there is a, a, a uniform uh, uh, there is a, a di marked dilatation of the ascending aorta and diffuse ectasia of the rest of the aorta but we can see there is a dissecting uh, flap intimal flap it started from the ascending aorta and evolving the whole course of uh, the aorta till the aortic bifurcation and even extend to uh, uh, the uh, common iliac arteries so this is a dissecting aortic aneurysm. We can see also the difference between the two humans. This is uh, the uh, faint enhancement here. It's usually the false human with uh, an, uh, an intense enhancement here is uh, the 
uh, or uh, uh, or marked enhancement here is uh, usually the true the true lumen. This is uh, the characteristic pattern of uh, the uh, uh, dissecting aortic aneurysm, and it is a Stanford type A as it is involving the aorta, the ascending aorta. If it is not involving the ascending aorta, it is Stanford type B. So this is a case of a dissecting aortic aneurysm, Stanford type. A classic picture involving the whole length of uh, the aorta and you we should be familiar with such a pattern of uh, uh, the dissection in the 3d or reconstructed images this is a very common uh, uh, pattern and uh, very common classic uh, features of cl classic images in uh, spotting exam okay we can see here this is a rather well defined supracellular uh, lesions this is a rather homogeneous enhancement so in such a location we should uh, consider one of two possibilities either ma macro adenoma or meningioma these are the most common two possibilities uh, uh, we, as we see here we can see uh, the uh, or we can discriminate uh, the pituitary gland like this so if you c you can discriminate the pituitary gland separate from uh, the lesion the macro adenoma could be or can you can exclude by this uh, macro adenoma macro adenoma if there is a macro adenoma you can't discriminate the lesion from the macro adenoma you can't see the uh, the pituitary gland so if you see a pituitary gland so this is not a macro adenoma and this is uh, usually uh, the <coughs> other diagnostic possibility is the meningioma cellular or supracellular meningioma and we can see here this uh, characteristic broad base attachment along uh, the roof of uh, the uh, 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 sphenoid sinus this place is a very characteristic uh, to uh, uh, one of uh, the meningioma called planum uh, sphenoidal meningioma so this is uh, the site of uh, the planum sphenoidal meningioma when the meningioma resting along the uh, roof of uh, the sphenoid sinus this area is called planum sphenoidal so this meningioma is called planum sphenoidal meningioma Okay, in this case, we can see this uh, is a, a nodular lesion along the subependymal uh, location in the posterior horn of both lateral ventricle. And we can see this nodular lesion are similar to the gray matter in both T1 and T2. So this is a gray matter heterotopia. And the other differential diagnosis is the chief sclerosis, but the nodules are similar to the gray matter in, in both T2 and T1. So this is with uh, uh, so a gray matter heterotopia, not a uh, tuberous sclerosis. Tuberous sclerosis usually differ from the gray matter in either uh, T1 or in T2. And also we can see that these nodules are parallel to uh, the ventricular outline and this with goes with uh, the subependymal heterotopia in the tuberous sclerosis, the nodule usually perpendicular to the ventricular outline. In this uh, child, we can see there is an intraocular uh, mass lesion. This is a bilateral intraocular mass lesion, and we can see this a calcification in this uh, mass lesion. So uh, this is a, a pathognomonic for the retinoblastoma. If you see an, a child with an intraocular mass lesion showing calcification, this is a retinoblastoma, and this is case with a bilateral uh, retino, retinoblastoma. In this also child, seven years old the child we can see there is a posterior fossa lesion that show a cystic area with a um, mural nodule take in homogeneous enhancement after contrast injection so this is a, a large uh, uh, lesion showing cyst with enhancing mural nodule in a child this is a pilocytic uh, astrocytoma this is a characteristic of pilocytic astrocytoma this in this case we can see a large hiatus hernia here and as we uh, said uh, many times if you see a large hiatus hernia you should uh, 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 make sure about uh, the configuration of the stomach and uh, the orientation of the stomach we can here see uh, that the stomach take a horizontal line and with an uh, 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 the greater curvature is uh, 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 turned upside down and become uh, uh, in an upward location as re as regard the lesser curvature and this is the characteristic of uh, uh, the organoaxial volvulus so this is a large hiatus hernia with shoot with organoaxial uh, volvulus okay in this case we can see there is a, a rather well defined nodule seen in the hypothalamic regions this nodule is seen here and in the post contrast images does not take contrast enhancement and this characteristic for uh, the hypothalamic hamartoma or hamartoma of the tuber cinerium. 
uh, the most important thing is the, the location of the lesions and also the, uh, uh, the region does not take enhancement in both contrast images and this is very crucial to say this is a hypothalamic hamartoma or hamartoma of tuber cinerium. Uh, in this case, we can see multiple lesions, subcortical and uh, periventricular lesions, these uh, deep white matter lesions. These lesions are uh, fairly defined and they are bright in T2 signal. And they are not associated with a surrounding mass edema, surrounding vasogenic edema or mass effect. Uh, so, and in the post contrast images, we can see this one of the region cake and incomplete ring enhancement and very clear here. So, this we, we should in these features are uh, 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 going with uh, uh, demyelinating process. The demyelinating process in a child, in a five years old child, we should consider Adam or acute disseminating cephalomyelitis. So, this is a, a bilateral, a multiple bilateral lesions with uh, characteristic features of uh, uh, demyelinating process in a child uh, likely it is uh, representing adam or acute disseminating cephalomyelitis so this is uh, 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 clearly here uh, this is a retroperitoneal lesion seen at the left lumbar region this retroperitoneal it uh, fatty lesion except exhibit a fatty uh, content or fatty signal and uh, in a retroperitoneal location we should consider retroperitoneal uh, liposarcoma and uh, we can see here that uh, it is abutting the kidney but without a characteristic uh, notch sign so uh, to differentiate between uh, the liposarcoma and renal angiomyeloma if you see a, a, a notch sign you should consider uh, uh, angiomyeloma if you didn't see the notch sign it is usually and it is usually separate from the kidneys not not rising from the kidney it is in the retroperitoneal uh, location we should consider liposarcoma lipoma is uh, 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 not a care usually it is uh, not a care in the retroperitoneal uh, space if you see a lipomatous lesion or fat lesion in a retroperitoneal location it, it should consider liposarcoma even uh, you you didn't see uh, soft tissue component, septation or uh, traversing vessels in a retroperitoneal location liposarcoma is the most predominant and lipoma does not occur there uh, this is uh, 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 th in this case we can see a large mass lesion occupying the left he hepatic loops segment 2 we can see these lesions is showing a peripheral nodular enhancement and in a portal and delayed phase there is a continuous fill in of the lesions and the enhancement is usually similar to uh, the uh, 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 phase of uh, the, uh, uh, the contrast in the, in the same phase uh, so this is uh, all features are characteristic of hemangioma and in this case this is a very large hemangioma which is called giant hemangioma and in giant hemangioma we can clearly see that uh, the lesion uh, ever never ever uh, uh, completely opacified or completely filled in in the delayed images usually uh, there is a central area does not take enhancement uh, uh, this is called a central scar uh, but this is here in a giant hemangioma as it is a very large and the central portion does not take enhancement so this is all features uh, uh, the uh, characteristic of uh, hemangioma giant hemangioma the uh, peripheral nodular enhancement the continuous fill in in the delayed in uh, progress in a uh, delayed image progress fill in in a delayed images and also uh, the matching blood pool sign which is the contrast is usually similar to the contrast in the blood in the same phase here in the last case we can see there is a, a marked pneumothorax right side pneumothorax and there is a, a paraceptal uh, uh, emphysematous lung changes, centrolobular and paraceptal emphysematous lung changes and uh, one of these uh, are large called uh, uh, pulley formation so this is a case of uh, centrolobular and paraceptal emphysematous lung changes with a pulley formation and secondary uh, marked uh, or mild moderate to marked right side pneumothorax usually one of these polar ruptured and cause this pneumothorax and this is one of the common complication of uh, the emphysema or lung emphysema. Thank you. I hope this was uh, uh, this was a good session, and uh, uh, meet you uh, next time, inshallah.